All right, let's look at a fealty deck for today. Do a little bit of a different deck, back to the fealty decks. I guess I'm going to upload every day again. I think that's probably what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to be out of town towards the end of the month, so I don't know if I'm going to upload for those two weeks. Uh, I think I'm still going to try to. I'm not sure if it's going to work. But you guys probably don't care about that, so let's just talk about this Nice Watch Fealty deck. The Nice Watch Fealty deck, I was, uh, I don't know where to start talking about this. I guess the first card that I knew I wanted to use with this was the Fresh Recruits. So I wanted to, so with a Nice Watch Fealty deck, you're literally trying to make like, oh, a Nice Watch Good Cards deck. And that's like the actually the perfect deck for this card because it searches for three different characters across the three nice watch traits. So you can't make it well, I guess you still could probably, but it's not really inclined towards making a deck that only focuses on one of these three traits. You really want to make a deck that has like the best characters from all three of them. And then that way this event is really good. And this is pretty insane card advantage, even as a three cost event, which is pretty expensive. Um, not only drawing three cards, but drawing three characters and them being the specific characters that you choose as opposed to random ones is really, 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 really good. Um, and it's really, really good when you can play it with fealty for only two gold, which makes it way more affordable. Uh, lots and lots and lots of decks will pay two gold to draw three cards because Counting Coppers is a plot that sees a lot of play. And even Exchange of Information now, uh, you're probably giving up at least two gold on that plot. Like, you could definitely play something with at least five gold instead, but it's worth it to draw that many cards. So having it at a, as an event is certainly worthwhile in my opinion. Otherwise, we're going with the Corset Wall deck. Um... It might be a little bit boring for like every nice watch deck to be a corset wall, but the problem is you really don't have a win condition in nice watch if you're not using that. Or and I mean you could go like crossing or something like that, but if it's some deck like this, fealty, like the agenda's not giving you any type of power gain, it's it's not gonna be that easy for you to actually gain power if you don't have this bad boy. So I think it just makes sense. And as long as these shadows, like uh, slow decks that literally don't marshal any characters are around, I don't mind playing this card. It makes those matchups uh, very much more tolerable. So let's talk about the characters that we've selected to go with the Fresh Recruits. I am trying a couple of the Aged Craftsman, the new builder. He does have a pretty good ability because he can even put Underground Vault into play, which is like insane when he pulls that. But I only have two of them. Because uh, I don't want to, like, keep playing more of them after the locations have been pulled out of my deck. Like, the next one that you play is less likely to activate. And then the one after that is less likely than that one, and so forth and so on. So I think two is fine. And I do have a couple of the Flea Bottom Alleys, which I think is totally reasonable in a deck that has enough two and three cost characters to go along with it. Plus it's loyal, so it goes with the fealty. I think this has a good enough number of like two and three gold characters to use the Flea Bottom Alley. It also gives you something to pull with at the gates besides only Gates of the Moon. I guess Great Hall is always an option, so. But it's it's good to pull with uh, at the gates, like if you see that you don't have a expensive character in hand, but you do have, let's say, the Age Craftsman, then you can go and get this for turn one. We've got Airy, loyal character with useful ability, Dolores Ed. I have two large characters in the deck, which are Corin Halfhand and Jon Snow, the three icons. The three icons, Jon Snow, I think is another really good fit for the deck because, like I said, we're actually playing like a balanced amount of characters of all three Night's nice Watch traits. So that goes along with his ability very naturally. And he is just a very strong character to have around while he has like two of these three keywords going on. So I like him in this deck. I think he's pretty good. Corrin Halfhand is like always good. And I needed another ranger besides the old forest hunter. I did have the seven cost old bear Mormons in the deck. Because I was like, well, I'm playing these big cards. Let's just play another one. And 
maybe this guy will be good, but even in a core set wall deck, he's just not, just doesn't seem worth it. I don't know, like, even when you can activate his ability, a lot of the time it's like, uh, is this really that important? And, like, I don't know, he feels like a win more card, if that makes sense. Like, if you can activate his ability, you're probably in a strong enough position that it's not that big of a deal to be able to do it anyways. So, I took him out. I wanted to play Begging Brothers, but I actually got stopped by the fealty drawback that you cannot include more than 15 neutrals. So that's why there's not Begging Brothers. There probably would be otherwise. But, yeah, the Old Forest Hunter loyal card goes with Flea Bottom. Because uh, we're playing Corset Wall, so we play Flea Bottom and Veteran Builder. Shadow Tower Mason, always good in wall decks. Samwell, two Hobbs. Uh, the Stewards, yeah. The Recruiters, they're always good. This is like the cast of Nice Watch characters. I think it is a very like good, sort of efficient character package. Then we've got the Cravens and the Milks, the Nightmares. Wasn't sure what else to use over Nightmares in Night's Watch. Night's Watch doesn't have that many great events. Um, you know, we already enabled fresh recruits, and then after that, I'm like, well, I don't know what I'm supposed to play here. So I think Nightmares is fine. You never really go wrong with Nightmares. Then we have Economy and Haunted Forest. Only two great halls, because we only have two big guys. So yeah, at the gates, close call for free, Flea Bottom. You probably don't need Confiscation in this deck. But I don't know. You still are going to get milk put onto your, like, Jon Snow. Or even just Recruiter for the watch could have milk put onto him. But I definitely think it's questionable. I'm just not sure what to play instead. I think, like, Forced March would be fine. Um, if I was still super... Realistically, you should probably play Forced March because your worst matchup is Greyjoy anyways. And that's the matchup where Forced March is good. But I don't like having it as almost a dead plot against, uh, like, Martell and stuff like that. Exchange, here to serve for Aemon. Peace and Prosperity, because I sort of wanted an economy plot, but I didn't want to play, like, trading with the Pintoshi or anything like that. I think Peace and Prosperity is pretty solid in a deck with all these locations that don't cost zero and quite a lot that cost two or more. I think it's fine. And especially with, like, the fealty bonus as well, it makes for a pretty reasonable, like, economy option, I think. And then Valar Doharis. We're only playing two large characters, and they're not super important. They're not, like, the centerpiece of the deck. So I think Valar Doharis is definitely good to have. Alright, let's play a game. No Greyjoy, no Greyjoy, no Greyjoy. Don't do it. Ha! Not Greyjoy. Baratheon Banner Lion, that's certainly weird. Let's see what he does. I am not sure what Baratheon Banner Lion will be. What will it be? Turn those cards over. Another one. Oh my goodness, six cards. What is going on? Maybe it's a Shadows deck. That actually makes a lot of sense. It's probably like a Shadows deck with the black cells. That could be annoying. We're off to a good start, though. Because he gave us Penny to take with the Recruiter. I like that. Hmm. Oh, we already got the fresh recruits. That's handy. Oh, Calm over Westeros. That's cute. I wonder if he's still going to say military. Oh, he picked Intrigue. I think that makes sense to pick Intrigue there. I guess we'll get the other Great Hall because we already have Jon Snow in hand. Sure, and because we have the Age Craftsman, like, uh, leaving the Nice Watch locations in the deck makes it more likely to activate the Age Craftsman. We already drew the wall. That's nice. Alright, let's do this. Now let's think what we're gonna... I guess we're just gonna play Jon Snow because why the heck not. 
two great holes on turn one. Let's just do it. And play the old Forest Hunter so he has Intimidate. Then we can play Flea Bottom probably. Yeah, and we can discard the Age Craftsman to gain one gold and then put him in with Flea Bottom, which is a pretty dank combo. And that was one that I wanted to do in this deck that I forgot to mention actually. This used to be a standby card for Nice Watch to always go with Flea Bottom back in like the days when you could play Breaking Ties. I think it's still pretty good when you can combo it with cards like Age Craftsman because this is enters play, not, uh, how do you say, not when you marshal. So we're definitely going to do that. I expect him to not do anything and then play Valor Magulus. That's my guess. I mean, it just makes sense. He has one character with a save, and I have, like, a big scary board. Patch face, okay. Patch face. We're going to get patched on our faces here. Who plays this card? Sir Pounce. Okay, I don't know what this guy's deck is. Maybe it's like the Weenie deck, but you would usually do Kohor if you were doing that. So I have no idea what's going on. Oh, look at that combo. So efficient. I love it. Alright, Age Craftsman. Pull something good. Oh, yes. Beautiful. Look at that. Underground Vault. Amazing. All right, let's intimidate. Oh, he has all three traits. He has insight, stealth, and intimidate. Oh my goodness, get duffed on. He used the duplicate. That means he's not gonna do Valar Margulis. Well, that's pretty good for us. I have to say that's quite good for us. I messed up a bit there. I should have done power with Jon Snow and military with the old Forest Hunter. Because I cannot win a power challenge now. It's a little bit of a misplay on my part, but I don't think it's a big deal. Defend? Yeah, I think he should defend. Uh, no, don't stand. Let's just do this in case. Uh, actually, this is bad against O'Harris here to serve because he'll make it trigger first. And. The way he was playing did not seem like a Valar Morghulis. So, if he Morghulis is, then he just freaking got me. Let's do Peace and Prosperity. Yep, no Morghulis. Do I go first again? I don't mind going first when I have the Intimidate. I'll just put him first, who cares? Yeah, the Peace and Prosperity is a nice plot to flip on the turn that you know you want to play the wall. Because you get that minus two location discount. Crossle, madam. Slightly annoying. I can actually milk that. If he doesn't play anything scarier, I probably will. Because the milk is free this turn, so I might as well play it. Wow, this dude is just not doing a whole lot. Uh, 
Uh, oh yeah, let's play. Oh, I wasted my location discount on that flea bottom alley. That was a misplay. I'm supposed to play the wall first and then the flea bottom alley. Total sort of a brain misfire there. Let's just do this. Didn't end up using the character discount at all. Holding Corin back, even though I could have paid, paid him for zero gold, because it's just over committing. Like, there's just no need. No, my Jon Snow, that is annoying, but again, does it really matter? I don't think it's a big deal. So that was two, this is three. Oh no, I thought I had the Haunted Forest. Well, whoopsie daisy. That's fine. Craven doesn't seem super strong with what he has. I don't think I can actually win in, in Intrigue or Power. No, I can't. So I'll just collect my wall power probably. Sorry, have to go already. Sure, buddy. Well, that's a little bit disappointing. Let's try another one. That did show off the deck, like, doing really, really well. But it's just a bit short, a bit one-sided. The opponent was playing, like, a bad deck. Alright, don't counterpick me. This guy was just a spectator. If it's Greyjoy, I'll be pissed. Alright, sure. Bar Baratheon Dragon. So this is probably Queen's Guard. But I think we can actually deal with Queen's Guard because we have Craven and we have Confiscation. So we have some answers. Do I s yeah, let's go wall veteran builder. So we already have wall, flea bottom, veteran builder on turn one. Wait, is, is this like a Shadows deck? It must be. Holy goodness. So now, like, last game I thought it was going to be Shadows. This guy's actually playing Shadows. That's interesting. We already have the combo on turn one, which is really good, because he's not Greyjoy. So his disruption options are fairly few. And like I said, this, it makes a map, the corset wall makes this, like, Shadows matchup so much better. Because you don't have to care at all about what they're doing. You're totally fine just sitting there and passing challenges and doing absolutely nothing. It's amazing. I think we're always going to play this underground vault no matter what. But we might as well trigger the flea bottom alley first. Yep, underground vault. Do I play Corrin? Yeah, I think I can play Corrin here. There's not much else to spend on. We'll hold one back. Mm, do we need to hold one copy back? Maybe. I think it's okay to hold one back. Then do we need to play Haunted Forest? Probably not. Yeah, let's just do this. I'm fine sacrificing one of these veteran builders for this turn anyways, because, like, I probably would sacrifice one of them. I don't know. No, I'm safe against Morghulis because I have close call, so, but, like, if I end up needing to sacrifice one of them this turn to trigger the wall, I'm totally fine with that. Because one of them needs to be in the discard pile anyways, so might as well just go ahead and put him there. This is an example of how annoying the super duper shadows decks are because he's just going to marshal nothing and there's absolutely nothing for me to do with my challenges like there's literally no point in declaring any of them and that's why when i really like having this course at wall because then i'm like okay sure that's fine uh, he actually marshaled a character well good on him i guess we'll attempt to kill it even though i highly doubt that it'll work what can he have in shadows for three Aegon probably uh, or that, sure. So I will probably kill a veteran builder for military claim and then play close call next turn. That's the plan.
He does get to kneel the wall with his military claim. That is annoying. But I'm okay not triggering it for this one turn. Denied. Oh no, my faction card is kneeling. Damn it. I thought Dolores said was going to pop in. Welp. Maybe the Corrin dupe will get used. Poison coin. Are you serious? See, that's why it's good that I did not use Corrin's duplicate. That is why it's good. I don't think he will play Valar Morghulis to kill these two characters. And if he does to kill these two characters, I think I'm okay with it. So I'll still just play Close Call. The other play would be Maester Aemon with Here to Serve. Let's see what he's going to do. Forced March? I'm going to guess Forced March. That is my guess. Oh, Trade Routes. All right. I guess that also makes sense. So he's playing Second Sons, but he's not playing Flea Bottom. What's the logic there? Not sure what the logic is. Because this is not a very good card without Flea Bottom. Ah, nothing for the Age Craftsman. What a fail. I cannot use Dolores Ed's ability because I kneeled my faction card. That was a misplay. It's probably supposed to um, not use my faction card here because I don't really need it. Oh, uh, man, there's a bit of a misplay. We're just going to do this. Yeah, this is okay. Like, I still have two gold left over. I did not need the fealty discount there. Definitely should have left the faction card up for Dolores Ed. Two gold is nice with Flea Bottom because I can attack with the Veteran Builder and defend. And I'm assuming Corrin Halfhand will not get to ever do any challenges this game between Shadow Priestess and the Black Cells, which is surely going to show up at some point. Nine gold. Okay. He has nine gold. That's a lot. Let's attempt to do something with Corrin. I'm trying to think of what he's going to do with nine gold. But yeah, I'm not sure. Let's just find out. I mean, there's. I highly doubt that this challenge is going to go through. Uh, I might not should have done this because of In the Name of Your King. That's kind of a waste if he has that event. But surely this, there's going to be something that stops this. I'm just not sure what it's going to be if it's not that. Okay, he just lets it go. Well, I'm happy with that. Uh, I mean, it could be the Varus that kills a character with power on them, but I have a duplicate, so I won't actually kill him.
Now, I don't, I don't care about declaring these attacks, even though this is my only military and intrigue icon to protect the wall, because I have the veteran builder flea bottom. So it doesn't matter at all. Citadel Archivist. Well, good thing my veteran builder is not currently in the discard pile. Does not trigger it. Okay, then. He didn't want to shuffle Second Sons back into his deck. I guess I can't blame him. Alright, nine gold. What are you gonna do, buddy, with nine gold? Nine gold. Brings Aegon out of shadows after all of the challenges. Okay. Now in Baratheon, I think this guy can get the Valyrian's crew, which is pretty decent. Looks like he's having trouble deciding what card to get. Salador San, okay. Maybe he's going to play a pinch of powder. That would be annoying. That would certainly be annoying. Let's see, is he going to do it with both? Oh, no. Maybe not, then. Maybe not, then. Jade Sea Dromond. Don't discard Flea Bottom. Of course. Of course! It was guaranteed. It was guaranteed to discard Flea Bottom. Oh, I messed up. I was supposed to use the Veteran Builder before he declares another challenge. I just hit pass. So, misplay. Oh, he's going to do a challenge. Well, that's a total waste of time. Not sure why he did that. Now, I'm assuming he has a military icon that's going to come out, but oh well. I have to try that there, because with the order of things... Like, he can just say, in challenges, and the wall won't stand, and the veteran builder will go to the bottom of the deck. All right, we got it. Can't believe that, man. Discards the other copy of Flea Bottom out of my hand with his Intrigue claim. The same, like, challenges phase that he puts the Jade Sea Dromond into play, so I don't have any chance to see the Jade Sea Dromond and then dupe the Flea Bottom. Super frustrating. That's the type of thing that would only ever happen to me. All right, we do here to serve. Probably not for the same reason as before. Could just do exchange of information. I guess I like peace and prosperity, it's fine. 
Oh, he did do Valar. All right, then. I guess I should have seen that coming. I don't know what I was actually thinking there. I should have done Maester Aemon to save Three Finger Hob. But it's probably okay. It's probably fine. I guess it's also good to be able to put Maester Aemon in after Valar Morghulis is gone. It's also handy. Do I milk this guy or put Craven on him? I don't know. Let's think about marshalling first. I think we play Craven so that the Shadow Tower Mason will be active. Alright, let's play Airy. So if we play, yeah, we can play Airy for zero this way. Then we don't really need to kneel for fealty. So we can maintain Dolores Ed. And I guess kneeling gets us one more card. And we probably have enough intrigue defenses with Airy, so this should be okay. I do want the extra card from the extra messenger raven. Pass. Yep, get past. I could military this, but... Yeah, he's over reserve, so I'll do it. He's over reserve. So it probably doesn't really matter what order we do him in. If he wasn't over reserve, I don't think I would do this. But since he's over reserve, even though this takes away the Craven. Uh, it's a bit of a misplay. I was supposed to do power with Shadow Tower Mason. Because he's going to lose his power icon when Davos sleeps play. Oh no, I did it the right way. I thought he would lose power and keep military. Okay. I did it correctly. Ignore me. I don't know what I'm saying. He did not trigger Davos' reaction. He just let him die. That was nice of him. I guess I am already at 10 power, so I guess we won this one. Yep. Get out. Trying to play this Shadows garbage where you just sit here and don't play any cards. Yeah, this is what I have to say to that. Pass all your challenges. You think I care? We don't care at all. Get night watched.